have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Video series RWG OSD Oversized Delta. Oh, ho, ho, ho. what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the OSD build. So what you're looking at is some of the rod ends. These are Traxxas. I'll show you these a little more in detail later. There's one of the little balls that fit in those guys that move around. So we're going to take that aluminum plate right here. We're basically going to turn this into a jig. So to get these the right length, we need to make a jig. So um, this is a upside down 3 millimeter Hansen 0.5 pitch. Basically, we're going to be drilling holes and tapping. So I got my tap and die chart right there. Ta-da! Got a number, a 38 drill bit, according to my chart. So the proper drill bit. So we're going to set this plate up in the milling machine. Basically, I just want the exact length here. Um, so the only reason I'm using the milling machine is to get my length correct. So we're basically going to take a center drill here, drill it out. Then using a 38 number 38 drill bit, drill it out, and then move on to tapping. So you can see the plates actually flexing a little bit there, but that's okay. Uh, the tapping should go in straight. So we're going to start the tap with the machine, uh, with it in the chuck, and then we're going to finish it by hand. Now, what I'm showing you right here in normal speed is I took a basically a pan head screw or a bolt actually and put it in the chuck because the back side of the T handle there for the tap has a little round um, beveled spot in it where you can keep the back of the tap handle square by the vise or excuse me by the uh, um, the drill chuck there anyway this seemed to work okay um, you saw the plate flexing, so that's not great. But we're going to move this guy all the way down to 343 millimeters. That's what I decided to use. So same method here. Drill, center, tap, and there's the plate. So we'll get back to this plate later. But first, we need to work on the carbon fiber rods. So these carbon fiber rods, I believe, are 7 millimeter inside diameter. Um, they're very, very thin. They're called ultralight. And they're very thin. So, okay, here I'm, what I'm showing you is basically I'm using a Dremel tool to cut carbon fiber. Some people don't know how to cut carbon fiber. So this particular wheel is a meshed um, grinding wheel. This is a also a grinding wheel, but it's like pressed. And you can see there's a thickness difference, and you can get them even thinner. Um, but the diameter is smaller. And unfortunately, you can see I'm going to be cutting a straight piece of carbon fiber and I would like to cut it square. So with that said, you can see right here by this demonstration, pretend like my bolt is my carbon fiber rod. To cut it, to get it in that small diameter wheel, it has to be at a nasty angle. So I'd rather use that wheel, but unfortunately I had to use the other type of wheel that I'm trying to show you how much bigger it is, because I wanted to get more straight cut. So carbon fiber cuts pretty good with these wheels. I usually just put it on there and then uh, hold it steady with one thumb on one side and hands on the other side and basically rotate it to cut it. So what I'm showing you right there is that this stuff, all the carbon fiber runs in one direction. This is not a woven carbon fiber rod, so I just smashed it, which is bad. Um, so I'm just basically cutting these, uh, trying to keep everything steady and up against the Dremel and just rotating it nicely as you can see here. And if you're really careful, you can cut the carbon fiber rods just just perfectly fine. You just sort of have to maybe practice cut a few times. But uh, make sure you get everything steady, because as soon as the Dremel bit catches and it snags, it's, it's, it's bad news bears. Bad news bears. So there they all are cut. And now, and they're not perfect, but again, don't forget, we're going to get them perfect with the jig we made. So they look good for now few maybe one millimeter off on that one so this is what they look like so watch how fragile they are that's bad all the fibers are running in one direction and there's no real coating on these things my other carbon fiber rods I always ordered had coating on them these don't appear to have coating 
Um, so that's sort of an issue. I thought about putting a coating on there, but the reason that it's like this is because it's considered an ultralight carbon fiber rod. They're all wanting, running in one direction. So I ordered the exact diameter that I needed to fit these rods, because instead of putting them on the inside of the rod ends, I'm actually going to put them on the outside. So I tried to press fit one, and yeah, this happened. It cracked. Because it's all running, the carbon fiber is all running in one direction. And so it's, it's such a tight fit that it's basically perfect. Well, now I gotta solve that problem. So, out to the shop. Get the mini lathe out, and basically we're gonna have to turn down all of those rod ends so they fit. That was the solution I came up with. So what I'm going to show you here is a little jig that I made for my um, lathe, my mini lathe. This is the only thing I ever milled on that big milling machine I had at my old house. So this is basically two magnets attached to a block with a stopper on it that's been threaded with a very long all thread through there. So on one end of the all thread I have a bolt, uh, or a nut, excuse me, and that nut is a jam nut. It jams up against the end of the on the far right hand you can see it jams up against the back side or the front side this this time I'm actually working this in reverse I'm going out instead of in but basically you just adjust this until you get the optimal depth you want and that's what I'm using as a depth guide so this uh, lathe doesn't have like a stopper on it so I just made one that's how I made it work so it's sort of backwards right now usually you machine in towards the chuck so you just flip it around but in my case I'm doing the opposite so you can see there as I ream it out it stops. This gives me a perfect measurement every single time. So right here I'm just fitting it and then we'll do them all. Um, so what I did here is I took a drill bit that was just the right size to press one of those rod ends on there. So you can see I just push it on there and push it all the way in to a maximum and they all should be molded the same. And that's what I'm assuming. So I set up the, um, the lathe here like I just showed you from the back side set everything up to cut the depth I was looking for and the length I was looking for. So this here is actually in real time when you gotta go the right direction. There we go. So this is real time and yeah I guess my wife can say something. Oh, I'm just tired. Oh, I'm just tired she says. It's almost... What time is it? Uh, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. Staying up late, ignoring my wife, just so you guys have a video to watch. Isn't that nice? Wonderful. <laughs> All right. So I'm using these Traxxas rod ends. Um, I actually bought two sets of these when I ordered them for the Rostock originally, and uh, I've had these ever since. And I had these as spares in case I needed them. However, that printer, the regular Rostock I uh, originally built, these have been on there for over two years. And I've run that thing almost every day in that time period. And believe it or not, these things still fit extremely tight onto the ends. Um, when they come, they come in pieces like this, and you have to snap them together. And basically, they fit really tight on here. They actually pop in there, they snap in there, and they're really tight. I put synthetic oil on them and they have lasted over two years on that printer and it has zero slop. Zero. They work really, really, really well. Alright, first things first, we gotta put these together. So the best way I found is either get a pair of parallel sliding channel locks. In this case, these are Nipix, one of my favorite piece of tools, equipments that I own. German made. Quite expensive, but well worth the money. And uh, I'll show you how these fit together. There are two surfaces. One is this shiny ring side and one is this doll side. I don't know if they've machined this a certain way or pressed it or made it or heated it, I don't know, but it, it seems to go in better on that shiny side. So these actually come with the balls and you have to actually press them in here. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. All right, so the best way I've found to pop these in there easily without a hammer is just get yourself something that fits inside that hole and so that this will slide all the way through but doesn't uh, doesn't hit it as it goes through 
Gonna set this thing up just right. Shiny side up. Set it in there like that. Get these sliding parallels set up just right. A little bit more. Alright. Make sure that you have this lined up so it goes through the hole and just give it a little squeeze. So without actually hammering, now that is inside of there. Yeah, you could pop them in there with a hammer. You cannot push them in there by hand. Uh, at least I couldn't do it. But uh, simplest, easiest, fastest way I've seen. Let's just for fun see if we can just push it in there. I don't know if this will work, but we'll try it. Oh, see, i got to be able to push on that little piece. Yeah, it takes more effort than that. Uh, oh, that friggin' hurts. Ouch. Yeah, back to narration. So, slapping these things together real fast. This was, you know, the method I used. You could probably tap them with a hammer, but I didn't want to put any extra stress on there. So, slap these babies in there and turn them down. Wonka, wonka. This actually worked really well. I could, after I got it set up and configured, no problem. So, there they are as a comparison. One's machined and one is not. You can see that lip on there. Just right. Now, let's assemble these guys. So, there are numbers on these. I don't think they mean anything. I think they're just a molding number. So, I attempted to match them up, but I, psh, there wasn't even an equal pair. I thought maybe that was important, but nah. So, here's what I did with the jig. So, remember I threaded the aluminum. So then I took a bolt and I threaded it all the way through and then put a nut on the other side which basically pulled the bolt square even if the threads weren't square. And then put a washer on there. Then we're going to put our rod end on there. Then we're going to put another washer on there. And then we're going to put another nut on there. So this is a 3M hardware by the way. Hey quit laughing at me. <laughs> My wife is laughing at me because I'm mumbling over here doing these audio. So that's how I'm going to be assembling this. I want to get you that close up so you can see it. So I'm using a two-part epoxy. This epoxy is very old, and it actually came from like Keisters or something, which you guys probably don't even remember. But basically, um, this was what I had laying around, so this is what I decided to use. Two-part epoxy, seemed to work fine. Someone put it in backwards there, and yeah, that was probably me. Previous user. Operator error, that's me. Anyway, um, two-part epoxy, mix this guy up. My choice of mixing stir sticks here is just going to be some toothpicks. So toothpicks work great. So we're going to mix it up. I slapped quite a bit on the inside of this one. Uh, you may not need to use that much, but I really put a lot in there. Um, yeah. Okay, so push the rod end in there, and I, what I did is I spun it around. So I also put some extra epoxy on the outside spun the uh, carbon fiber and uh, holding the rod in, spun it around to sort of really get it mixed in. So I did the identical thing to the other side and once I had the whole thing, whole thing put together I just sat it on my jig and I put my hardware on there, my washer and my nuts and hey quit laughing I can say washer and nuts in the same sentence anyway so basically I pushed it to the front side as you can see in this close-up. I did that to both sides. I pushed both of them forward because unfortunately the only way to get them square is to clamp them with a bigger washer or something like this. Not a good idea. So I just made sure they both tilted all the way forward and I let this sit for 10 minutes. So 10 minutes was enough to you know make sure it wasn't gonna move and so I could move on to the next rod. So after that epoxy, I realized that this epoxy is only good for a temperature lower than I am actually intended on using, which is near my bed surface. So it's only good for 93C, which I plan on getting at least 106C to my bed. So I had some Loctite brand. I switched to it. As you can see here, it's good up to 150C. So that was sort of my mistake. So one of these rods is a wrong epoxy and the other one is all Loctite epoxy and I can actually tell the difference by looking at it. 
So pop the rod off, you can see it slides in and out nicely and now we're going to do the next one. So the Loctite brand epoxy, uh, actually it, I preferred it anyway, that other stuff was pretty old. Um, so exact same method, this is the second rod. Now to check if the epoxy is hardened, I usually just touch it like this, feel it, try to bend it, put the uh, stir stick in it and it gives me an indication that okay I can take it out of the jig and it's not going to be destroyed basically. So how do you know you got them all done? Well, when you got six blobs of mess all over the place. Because there's six rods on the Delta. So basically, I got them all done. I saved you time. Look at you. Look at that. Stuck those two together on accident. Hey, quit laughing at me over there. You better speak up so they can hear you. Yeah? <laughs> oh my gosh. You say something. Anyway, so there's the rods. I put them all together on a single bolt. Now, if these were even out even a tiny little bit, they would not fit on the same bolt. Two? Okay, you can put two on there because they'll be at an angle. Try to get the third one on there. If it ain't right, it ain't gonna go. So that tells me by putting them on a single rod like this that they are great. Now, I did this while they were still sort of curing just in case they had a problem. So a little bit close up for you. Little overview. Turned out really nice. Um, I put a little excess on the ends there, as you can see, it's kind of excess bulged out. And I did that because I wanted to make sure that the carbon fiber didn't peel away. Being all linear carbon fiber, and I was cutting it, I was kind of afraid that it would be screwed up. So I, I did not want it to be screwed up. So there you go. That is how you assemble the rods. Make sure they're all identical and assemble them with the um, all your homemade parts I these I didn't weigh these rods but they're they're really really light and very strong uh, the only negative thing here is that the epoxy didn't seem to stick to the plastic very well so either roughing up the plastic or um, using a plastic epoxy might be better so there you go that's how I assembled these guys and now we get to put them on the printer that still isn't working <laughs> Okay, well that's it. No, I'm not going to show you how I put them on the printer because it's just a bolt and a nut. It's pretty simple. I will do that in a whole other video when I reassemble the entire printer. That'll be later. Got anything else to say? Pickles. Pickles. And ketchup. Pickles and ketchup? Yeah. Can't forget the mustard. Okay, this is not the same conversation we had when I accidentally wasn't recording. It was much more comical. No, you're just still working on it, and it's funny. Working on what? See, you're so confused. Nobody even knows what you're talking about. Just continue coloring. <laughs> okay. Hey, what are you doing? I'm dating it. You're dating this? Yes, what, what is today, the 23rd? What for? So I know when I colored it. Is it done? Yes, fine. That took three months. <laughs> Finally finished. Looks good. Thanks. Why is your phone uh, in pieces? Well, because it was really hot. Because it was hot? Yeah. So you took it apart? So it cooled off faster. Are you sure that works? I have no idea. Logical. Ah. <laughs> That's really right.